Hi, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate 4.3 demo for the piece I call Stoked. So this character, I don't know who this character is. I drew him at Sketchbomb a long, long time ago, and I always liked the drawing, which you can see there as I'm starting to do the painting. Um, and I just needed something easy because I had a string of more complicated paintings and stuff. And I was like, let's just do something where I'm going to have some fun. And that's what this was. He's got this big shape that's like this cloak type robe thing. So I'm really just painting like his face, his hands, his neck, his hair, and like that's it. His robes could have been more fleshed out, but I just wasn't interested in that. I always liked the fact that it was just a big shape. And I thought, hey, this is about taking it easy and not reinventing anything. So let's just do it. So the unfortunate thing is I mentioned in the past, this is during this like era of not capturing the time lapses. Uh, this one is egregiously not captured. Um, so we will do a deep dive, but the nice thing is this is actually a super simple piece. So it doesn't require that much of a deep dive. Uh, what you're seeing here is turpentine brush, normal shenanigans. We got some flats and then we're going to do some lighting layers and that's it. So the only thing really to reference right now would be the layer stacks. Uh, we've got the hands, the back hand, and the neck, and, and the back. Actually, I don't remember what the layer stack is, so let's just let the video roll. You can watch the painting part happen, and then when it cuts off and shows you basically nothing, we'll actually jump into the file and see what the layer stack is.
So yeah, that's all it kept of the recording. So basically like a majority of it got dropped. So let's jump into the file and see what we can see. Okay, so here we are with the file. Let's go through it. Simplest thing to do is just start turning some stuff off. So that one's simple, that's shine and signature. Here is the original drawing. Let's go ahead and just take a look at that real quick so you can see what that looked like. Uh, this is, th I drew this at Sketchbomb in San Francisco, so that's at least uh, like four years ago, but I think it was actually older than that. But um, I like the guy, so I thought, let's, let's color him. So let's switch this back to multiply. This is, oh, that's kind of cool look, huh? I should do something maybe with some lines again, like lines and rendered. Maybe that'll be the next thing. Anyways, um, so I use that as, of course as my guide and started painting. So let's get down to the flats. First of all, the, the overall color palette of this was just sort of chosen because it felt nice and light. And I think that this character could go like a lot of different ways. I just thought it was kind of like weird and quirky that it was more on the lighter side. I did struggle with the colors and shift them around a lot when I was doing the actual video, or I mean the actual piece that would have been in the time lapse, but I did end up here, so that's just how that was the thought process behind it so it's this sort of light peach color with another color a more saturated version of it just done with the turpentine brush just for some noise with a white outline with a lowered opacity so that way we can have some sort of a slight graphic sort of affected part of it kind of thing I guess you could say um, it's flats let's look at his flats so his hair is actually on top of everything in this one uh, eyelashes let's go to the face I guess that's where we are uh, so eyelashes and then eye meat iris excuse me pupil iris sclera and then uh, we've got the teeth the like gums and tongue and then the mouth as a main shape and then because he's got the really light hair, I didn't want to do like a five o'clock shadow that just really wouldn't show up that strongly necessarily. So, and I do it all the time. So I thought let's not. So we've got the eye socket darkening right there. And then the blush right there, which is also, by the way, down here on this hand, the front hand. And then we've got this vein on his hand. It's just slightly accented by the purple. And then the flats are the head and hand, front hand, are together. Then we've got the sort of noise brushiness from the uh, robe, the robe's main shape, the thumbnail, <laughs> which is actually really funny. Let's come down here to the thumbnail. This is the darkened part of it, and then the thumbnail itself. And then the blush from that hand is right there and then the backhand as well as the neck that's where all these that's how all these flats are allocated and then the little like cowl part right there so turn these all back on go through them okay so that's all of his flats as for his shading it's how you guys have seen me done, do this in the past. It's done with the turpentine brush. Here, let's, oh man, there's a lot here. Let's turn them all on and then turn them all off one by one. Okay, so first we have the sort of ambient occlusion type uh, brush. Now, let me quickly, I'm doing this one handed right now, but I'll try to show you sort of what the deal is here with this. Uh, so if I set this to multiply, and then I get the turpentine brush out here. Yeah, so we'll go like this type of thing, let's just say, and get that kind of, and then grab the turpentine smudge and work it a little bit like this. This is if I were doing just sort of like a, a smooth shadow across excuse me, around his face kind of thing. And you're trying to pull the parts of it that aren't painted into the painted part to try and lessen it, or try to pull the painted parts into the parts that are painted to try and increase it. So if you want this side of the face right here, actually let's go down here. If you want this pulled up 
and darker, you just pull it up from the paint. If you want it to be reduced, you pull from where it's not painted. This is all just a multiply layer sitting on top right there. So I do a lot of that smudging when I'm trying to get the soft look of this more ambient occlusion-y type feel, but I still keep the brush, the brush look in there because I want that. And then when I get into my direct shadow, this is mostly just painted in. There's a little bit of smudging that's going to happen where I want it to be softer, like right there on his upper lip. Um, but then you can see on his like cheekbone there, it's still a harsh line where it gets cast from his head onto his nose or the geometry of his nose is. Um, that's all still hard. Or we've got this soft fall off from the chin, the part that's going this way. But then this right here has that hard line because it's cast. His back hand is completely cast, and then his uh, front hand has a little bit coming off of the robe, and then and then where his knuckles are blocked, the light is blocked by, or excuse me, his fingers are blocked by like his knuckles and the top of his hand. Same thing with like the hair and the eyes and the tongue and the mouth. Some of this is a little pushed, like his tongue technically wouldn't catch some of that light. It'd be totally in black, but I want to sell some of that dimension, so I just sort of fake it anyways. And that's what you try to do sometimes when you're doing stylized stuff is you aren't necessarily trying to do it 100% real because there's still like a graphic quality to it. Here is just pushing his nostril a little bit more as we mentioned in like the Cory piece. Whoops. There's that. And then this is the bounce light right there. It's a blue bounce light that's just a lowered opacity. You can see it right there at full. And that's just trying capture some of this extra dimension there's theoretically some blue that's like up here in the top and and he's catching it we've got it on the knuckles it ends up adding more dimension because now what you're doing is you're saying that this is all in shadow but there is still some light affecting it you sort of get the best of uh, both worlds through through that uh, then we've got the stylized lighting rim there Here's some bounce light on the eyeballs, trying to sell the glassiness of those eyes. And now here is a little bit of intense lighting from behind him. So this is done by painting it in white like this. You can see all the spots where the, the light is hitting as hard as it possibly can. And then I duplicate that layer and make it a richer color and put it underneath. And in this case, it's more of a yellow. So you can see that's what it looks like. And because uh, there's just the nature of the brush, there's some transparency happening. And so the white is picking up some of that yellow. And those are both at full opacity. And then here is a bloom. This is where I sort of cheat. I don't make it look as painterly because I just want to make sure I'm selling the vibe. So I duplicate that white and blur it. And that gets you that bloom effect right there. You could do that through painting for sure, and I encourage you to, but in this case, I just was taking it easy and felt like doing it. Then uh, a little bit of subsurface scattering on the ear where the light's passing through the back of his ear. And the last thing is literally just this shine. This shine on his uh, eyes and a very little bit on his tongue. A little, little bit right there. And that's it. It's a really simple piece, uh, and that was the point. So there it is, flats, and then all those lighting layers turned on. And so that's it. That's the final piece. Simple, light, just kind of fun to do. And he seems stoked, and I hope you are too, with the file deep dive. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or any of the other ones, please consider liking them. Please consider subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.